It's 7 a.m., the perfect time to get breakfast, but there's also a place where you can get ice cream later in the afternoon. The sun is rising on a wonderful day of rail fanning in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. I was joined by my friends Fletcher, Dave, and Boris. After breakfast, we saw a G-scale layout and were curious to see what else was nearby. What? To do this to a very nice German engine. Ah, Lake George and Boulder, Santa Fe and Rio Grande City. Thomas, what the hell have you done? Look, he's derailed. Wait. <laughs> I think that's the ugly model of him. Later, we drove down to Strasburg. Right 611 was in a siding so rail fans could get pictures. Yeah. They were also letting people into the cab to blow the whistle or ring the bell. Across the street is the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. On display is a Lehigh Valley RDC and an Amtrak AEM-7. Behind the Swedish meatball is a GG-1. More model trains were set up in a tent near the 611. All of them were either HO or N scale. Hi, Dave. There's an N-scale model of 611 and a layout with a very accurate recreation of the Strasbourg Railroad. Another model of 611 in HO scale holds an excursion to paradise. Today seems to be an unlucky day for the operator, but everything is okay now. 611 continues down the line. Don't derail this time. She passes the Red Caboose Motel. Dozens of cabooses are lined up for people to sleep in. Here's a few in real life. Some of these cabooses even wear liveries of West Coast railroads. Let's get back to the HO scale 611. Having just arrived at Paradise, the engine will use a siding to go on the other side of her train. while the actual 611 is about to blow her whistle.
Now it's time to get on board our train. 611 will pull the train tender first to paradise. Uh, we have to tell him back. Get the cameras ready, folks. I'm already filming. Here she comes. With three more blasts from the whistle, we are ready to depart. The 8618 is a former New York Central SW8. Originally built in 1953, its original number was 9618. The switcher was even used by Conrail during the late 1970s. Some rail fans have given the engine the nickname Mavis, since Strasburg decorated the diesel as Mavis for a Thomas and Friends Halloween event later in October. Another Norfolk and Western locomotive, 475, is getting prepared for another passenger train. More rail fans are at the Red Caboose Motel. And we see a few buses in the background. Perhaps they wanted their passengers to get a picture with a good backdrop. Another railroad crossing at Cherry Hill is a popular place to film Strasburg steam locomotives. Trains do stop here sometimes.
After hearing the ghost train, we are again on our way to paradise. We've stopped at Paradise. Would have been nice to see an ACS 64 racing through with a passenger train, but we at least get a good view of 611 heading to the other end of the train. I thought you were going to try and prank me like Fletcher, where you stick the head out when I'm filming. <laughs> We catch 475 again as we enter the siding at Groff's Cove near the Cherry Hill Railroad Crossing. I just got him on video. I'm gonna do that next time. We're back on the platform to see Cagney 3 the miniature steam engine, pulling her usual three-car consist. <laughs> That's Andrew Liaga wearing the black 10-gallon hat as 8618 prepares to move 611's train out of the way for the 475 and her train. Photo frame the ticket. Oh, she said, oh, they're moving the... That engine's not taking the next train, is it? No, it's not. I'm 611 is back in the siding as Andrew dabs for a picture being taken by Fletcher. 
Christopher Kovacs also joined our group. He's wearing the blue hat. Cagney 3 is seen again going backwards. While 475 gets ready for another excursion. Built by Baldwin in 1906, 475 is 113 years old, but the changes that were made makes the engine look brand new, especially with the yellow lettering and numbers. With the nine car consist out of the way, it's time to see 611 and her train. There are also nine cars in tow. How is that rail through years here in America behave a lot more better than the ones in the UK? That's an interesting question actually, I don't know. I guess people, I guess after here what happened, a lot of things happened in the UK with Flying Scotsman and after that kid committed suicide by It's been a long story about that one, but yeah. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Anyway, this is the best place. We also see 8618 moving a covered hopper into another siding. Yeah, that's a former New York Central engine. She up there, she up there I, I know, but she's going to be made with for Halloween. Ah. <laughs> and look, she, I mean, come on, she, she, she's made the same color. That had it, I I might try some of Bachman's UK models. I do want the Black 5 as well as the uh, oh. Coronation class specifics. <laughs> There's one Bachman UK model I always wanted to get, and that was the model, and now and that happened to be that that three wheel, the six wheel uh, engine. Uh, it's based on a YouTuber over I I I, I knew, but he, you, you, you can see the videos now on DeviantArt. It's called his name is Dan, his name is Dan Snell. After enjoying a delicious hot dog, we see 475 returning to the station. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mastodon of the Indian Valley Railroad.
Christopher Kovacs is to the right. He reviews Pentrex videos, but will soon become a narrator for Greg Scholl Video Productions. Four seventy five is now coupled up to the train, and she has a very smoky startup. Christopher's camera, as well as mine, got covered in soot, which was wet at first, but it only took a few seconds to dry off. We now go for a ride behind Cagney 3. Shine Ortiz is in the same car as me. Back at the model railroad, more model trains have been put on the layout. There's a two-car Metroliner set, a GG1, and a Norfolk Southern Jeep with seven freight cars. Norfolk and Western number 1218 is also here. Back outside, 611 makes a grand appearance. Now it's time to head into the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Starting off our tour is the 1223, head to head with 7002. Both engines used to operate on the Strasburg Railroad. It has been 30 years since the last time they ran under steam. More model trains are here with a Lego train layout. My friend hates Lego, so I showed him a Lego CSX train. <laughs> and Ghostbuster. How bad did things gotta be for both of them to be in town? <laughs> the, an F40. 382. Like someone's. No, 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 no. Hey, Chris, I know this. You're on a Shea. 
and you're being chased down slowly by that engine right there. It's like there's the, a builder. Lima. Now there's a builder. Not if I you gotta should, do it no, very heavy I, suddenly. No, you can't catch me. Yeah, Chris says. Yeah. Yeah. So this is in the Reading mm -hmm. colors, not the American. It wasn't meant to be funny. It was serious. Sorry, I'm going to check and see if David's okay in the lobby. I'm kidding. Was he like professional? I don't think any world will adopt USRA designs. USRA. That's not exactly my quality. And I see the lid work. Yeah, they're freshly restored, too. Wait, freshly restored? Engine and it has its own YouTube channel dedicated to excursions. Yeah. <laughs> stay, stay, stay on the road. <laughs> and a CNO. That's like a Forney or something. It looks like it. Yeah, I was going to say, I know it's a Shea. It looks like it burns oil, though. Are they actually. It's amazing how she managed to beat the time. Almost won Probably almost. Good pose, Fletcher. A classic MU is in front of Atlantic number 460. A small model was made to show how MUs were maintained. Is this the electric shop? That's right. Is it the electric, electric railroads work? We now look under a classic consolidation, the 1187. We get another shot of 1223 in the background. The John Bull, this time with 7002 in the background. This museum also has a GG1, an E44, and a Conrail GP30. Since 1976, Conrail became a financial success after it was created to take over operations from six bankrupt railroads. Although it was a successful railroad, Conrail only lasted 23 years and was absorbed into CSX and Norfolk Southern. Ow. Holy moly, now that's amazing from the inside. So this is what the inside of it looks like. Wow. Who knew? Next up is 040 number 94, a Pennsylvania Railroad GP9, and a Penn Central Hopper. Fifty nine oh one is the only E seven left in existence. To his left are two more steam engines, ten wheeler number fifty seven forty one, and a Virginia and Truckee mogul, Tahoe. <laughs> Next up are a few tank engines, including one with an 080 wheel arrangement. A Jersey Central speeder. Hey, finally, something from my state. And a display showing how some men worked on the railroad. I'd rather be in the cab of an F-40. There's also a walkway, which gives you a good view of the trains on display. We have a nice overhead view of a GG1. Now this is heaven. It smells like ice cream. So yes, it does, it is like heaven. Heaven for us model railroaders. Another HO scale layout shows the Pennsylvania Railroad during its heyday in the late 1940s. As two trains roll down the main line, a consolidation switches a hopper. It stops on a bridge going over the main line. This is how some steam engines would refill on coal.
This could be the Broadway Limited, with a few cars borrowed from other railroads, including the Texas Special from the Missouri Kansas Texas. A shorter passenger train meets the Broadway Limited while going over a bridge. Christopher Kovacs and I spot a freight train as well. Let's look at the Broadway Limited one last time. Hey guys, look, it's the American Scar Lowy. Here's another steam engine, number 2846, and a snowplow. There's more to look at outside. Andrew and Alec are having fun with a bell. I, I got a layup, I got a distractor. Now it's my turn. Now we look at Amtrak E60 number 603, next to K4 Pacific number 3750. These two look nice together. Next we see a Maryland and Pennsylvania diesel from Baldwin and a rare Alco C415. A modern flat car is also on display with a metro liner and a vintage Amtrak passenger car. We get another shot of AEM-7 number 915 with another GG1. In the 1990s, AEM-7s became very popular in the Northeast Corridor. As we get another shot of 611, we head to one more place that you have to see. The National Toy Train Museum. There are hundreds of model trains from Lionel, Marklin, and Lego. There's even a sample of Lionel's 2017 Big Boy model. The Jersey Central's Blue Comet is on display with the 464 at the front. In real life, the CNJ did not use Hudson's for the Blue Comet. Brand new Pacifics were built by Baldwin in 1928. But a few older locomotives, including Camelback 592, would pull the train during the Great Depression. Lego trains have become very popular. There's even a set for the Hogwarts Express from Harry Potter. We also see several steam engines in a roundhouse and the Galloping Goose next to a Boston and Maine F unit. You're supposed to pick up the wood. Another blue comet set from Lionel with two more on a nearby shelf. The Toy Train Museum sometimes has more than one of the same set. A 
box cab electric with several freight cars. A line of boxcars, each representing one of the 50 states in America. There's even a few matchbox cars. We also see Union Pacific's M10,000 with Burlington Streamliner, the Zephyr. Thomas the Tank Engine is here with Annie and Clarabelle. This is the proper engine for the Blue Comet. We get another shot at the Galloping Goose running around its loop of track. Boston and Maine 2364 is still stationary with a short freight. Another freight is being pulled by a Union Pacific GP Series road switcher. There are lots of accessories you can get for your train layout, especially if you use Lionel. Norfolk and Western had many Class J44s, but none of them were numbered 746. One engine has been decorated to represent Strasburg's number 90, when it was still working on the Great Western in Colorado. The Marklin Wonder Wheel. Unfortunately, the train on this track is not running. Another Norfolk and Western 484 no gauge. With all the steam locomotives and model trains in close proximity, it's easy to see why Strasbourg is a rail fan's paradise. The Garden State has numerous passenger trains running through hundreds of different towns. Most of them are provided by New Jersey Transit. In this program, we will follow the Raritan Valley Line from the west end of High Bridge to Dunellen. There are lots of ALP45s, unique for running on either diesel or electricity.
The action gets better east of Raritan. It's double track all the way to Newark. Brook is the best place to watch trains on the Raritan Valley Line. Not only do you have New Jersey Transit, but Norfolk Southern and CSX operate here with a variety of freight trains on the Lehigh Line and the Port Reading Secondary. Rail fans always have fun here. You too will have fun watching New Jersey Transit the Raritan Valley Line. Sean Bodine Productions proudly presents more train action from New Jersey. This time it's CSX, the Trenton Subdivision. You'll see a variety in locomotives including Jeeps, SD40-2s, a Dash 8, and even a few locomotives from BNSF, Norfolk Southern, and SEPTA. You'll be impressed with the many freight cars seen on the trains as well, including a few still wearing logos of fallen flag railroads, such as Chessie System, Maine Central, and Burlington Northern. For Class 1 railroading at its finest, be sure to see CSX, the Trenton Subdivision. Amtrak's AEM-7s became very popular locomotives in the Northeast Corridor in the 1990s. What could possibly replace these high-speed Swedish meatballs? The answer arrived in 2014, when the very first ACS-64 came to service. You'll see many of these beautiful locomotives in service on the Northeast Corridor. As well as the Acela. And other passenger trains from SEPTA and New Jersey Transit. You'll also see ACS 64s in action on the Keystone Line. And as a special treat, you'll see a GG1 and Amtrak's Veterans Unit. You'll have a lot of fun when you watch Amtrak, the ACS 64.